<laughs> uh, Geef je een seintje als we kunnen starten? Ja, ja oké. Okay. So, uh, welcome. <laughs> well, This is on. Ricardo. <laughs> For people that don't know me, I'm Ricardo, and that is uh, Liebe. Liebe. And Liebe is our new professor of um, fire prevention, but probably it will get another name later on. I hope. That's a, yeah. that, that's a, that is a surprise it's and a idea. secret, I think. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So we are going to hear about that <laughs> at the end of the year. Uh, so welcome. So uh, very nice that you are interested in our uh, workshop, our breakout session about the basic principles. And actually, it is not really about the basic principles, but the basic principles are our basic principles. So that is... Hello, Louis. Good afternoon. So... Um, What we were thinking is, so we have in the Netherlands, we have the basic principles which are based on research and based on validation uh, internationally and validation based on case studies and with a lot of experts in our fire service expert group who were thinking about this. Uh, and sometimes maybe these basic principles may uh, give problems in certain buildings. Uh, so let's, let me first remind you a little bit about what is the basic principles. And of course, I also do this for the audience at home who is uh, looking afterwards because <laughs> most of you probably know the basic principles of firefighting. Except maybe, do you know them? No, yeah, because you are fire preventist, eh? yes? Oh. So is there anybody <laughs> else from fire prevention? Oh, another one. The, the, do you know something about basic principles of firefighting? Okay, so then, okay, so I'm not doing this for nothing then. Sorry, uh, Rene, and sorry, my colleagues uh, that already know this. So, so these are the basic principles, the Dutch basic principles, because in, uh, in I, I hear that in Belgium, for example, they don't do this, they are more aggressive, uh, and uh, in Sweden maybe also, but in the Netherlands we found that these uh, basic principles, which we also have implemented into our educations for firefighters and uh, crew commanders. And at the moment, there is also uh, training refreshments for officers in the Netherlands. And the basic principles are intended to be very simple. So you shouldn't have to think about applying these basic principles. The first thing, uh, and maybe you saw it yesterday, because I was talking about the fire triangle, which is very important because we all, everybody knows about the fire triangle. You need oxygen, fuel, and you need heat or energy uh, to have a fire and to continue the fire. And if you want to stop the fire, you take away one of these sides. But in the fire service, over the past maybe 10, 20 years, we forgot that the oxygen side is very important. So we reintroduced the fire triangle as one of the basic principles. Then. Another one, which is also based on, on our research uh, into command and control, situational command, and that is the human factor. So we know that firefighters will, which will be confronted with a lot of information. They need to take more time to have a good situational awareness and take the right decisions. Then, complete the 360, so we need to do a complete 360 reconnaissance to find the fire. And we ask ourselves three questions. Do we know where the fire is? Can we reach it? Do we have enough water? If all three are yes, then we can extinguish the fire from outside. If we have one no, then we have to go defensive, unless it is a small compartment. So I'll show you in this, in this um, scheme. Stop and think, take more time, look two times instead of one. Do your reconnaissance, location known, fire reachable, sufficient cooling. If yes, then you can extinguish the fire from outside. Otherwise, we have a defensive approach, which means that we at least prepare the prevention of fire spread. Unless we have a small compartment, and that has to do with the smoke cooling, because if You cannot reach the fire immediately. You have to cool the smoke, and smoke cooling only works in not too big compartments because you have to cool, you have to reach all the smoke, and about 70 square meters is the, the, the limit. So if you do that, then you need to have at least enough water or cooling capacity. You use the door control uh, because uh, closing the door means a lower heat, heat release rate Short distance, 
as soon as uh, possible water to, uh, on the fire and cool the smoke. So this is what we teach our firefighters. And sometimes, you know, there is some exception because sometimes you can do like this and you, you make one room safe. For example, you enter the building, no smoke, close the door, next room, next room, until you get to the fire. If that's possible, you can do that. If that is not possible, you can also do what we call an offensive uh, exterior attack trial. So you throw water from outside and you hope that it reaches the fire. It is possible. Sometimes it works, sometimes it works. If you are lucky, it works. If you're not lucky... It and if, if that doesn't work, then you could as well open up everything and let it burn down. Because then it burns faster. So some, some firefighters now think that you need to do uh, anti-ventilation, so keep everything closed, and they are waiting for days. But then it takes a long time before every, everyone, everything is gone, so you could also <coughs> open it. So this is the basic principles. And of course now, so what the question for here is that, uh, of course, there are situations where you think like, okay, so we have one no here, so we need to go defensive. It is too big, a big building, for example, or we cannot reach the fire very soon. Uh, so in in the interior attack, it's also not possible. So we have to go defensive. And we have a few examples of that. And that's what we want to think of you. Normally, you interrupt me. No, I'm here yeah. only for support. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he, yeah, normally he doesn't let me talk. I was waiting no. for this moment. <laughs> now is my chance. No, no, uh, what may be a good thing to add to this is this: uh, you do this kind of uh, in a circle. So it's not, it looks like a static model. But it's not a static model, it's a dynamic model. So for instance, you go to a building, at first you don't know where the fire is. Uh, you cannot reach it. But maybe within time, you know where it is, or you know how to reach it. Uh, and so you, you could do this, this questioning uh, within five minute periods over and over again. So you can go from first, okay, we go to defensive, and then later on, okay, we have now an answer, and then we go back to another approach. And actually, uh, the, the, the easiest buildings are the real small buildings, like residential buildings, because the rooms are small. You can go in, put out the fire. And the easiest ones are also the really big ones, which are in a real big fire when you go to them. Because then it's clear you cannot put out the fire. Because because you only because have you to go always need this, eh? yeah, you, you only have to go this. for uh, the the environment and uh, what's around it. Where the problem is, and also where the dangers are, is within uh, sizing up the volume. So if you come from a small building, go to a real big building, when the volume gets bigger, it's not as not easy to find if you can uh, get an answer, a yes answer for this. Uh, but the fire is also not that big. That it looks like a danger, but it become, can become a danger within time. So there is for firefighters the most difficult fires to fight, and also because in those buildings they have to go from one quadrant to another quadrant. So they have to switch within time. This, this is really dynamic. And also in those buildings, uh, Ricardo, I think, <laughs> that we have problems in... Uh, like this. Yeah. Just have one question. There's a, a door control for the offensive interior uh, attack, attack. Yeah. Um, but there's also uh, smoke cooling. So yes. Uh, yesterday we saw we want just want to emit yeah. out of the yeah. compartment. Yeah, so yeah. Door control is understood as keeping the door closed, but door control means that you open and close the door in your advantage. Okay, yeah. so that's no what you do. And, yeah. and, and of and course, next question is, suppose we use smoke, <laughs> <laughs> smoke stoppers, <Yeah. laughs> because then it is rather difficult to open yes. the door, you know? So, so that's what we, we have to think about. That is, at least, uh, again, uh, one thing that makes it more complicated, uh, but maybe we have an answer to that also. But ah, so, no, yeah. smoke at all, a smoke stopper is not always the best tool to use for door control. No, but that is, that is, of course... The easy <laughs> answer, it depends again. Yeah, it depends, yeah. 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 But but this, this, is the, this is the most difficult part, because yeah. if you do this all over again, then you're just saying to everybody, okay, uh, just find it out for yourself. And that, that's the problem. But, yeah, for uh, door control with a smoke uh, curtain, yeah, then you shield it. So 
then it's not as easy to get the energy out. So you have a to think about it. Uh, can be better. <laughs> a big? A big fan. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's okay. too difficult for me, you know, because we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because since the, our research in, uh, in outer water, we, yeah, it could yes, also but, be a door but, that, control. but yeah. then you assume <laughs> that the pressure from the the overpressure from the fan is bigger than the overpressure that is from coming from the room with the steam. Uh, and that is, and know. that is not, you know, <laughs> that is the, I don't have yes. the answer. So maybe, you know, it depends. It depends on the on the magnitude of the ventilator, etc. So that's it. But at least, so these are our basic principles, and that is that makes it very easy also for the fire service to say, okay, so if you don't have these criteria, then we will let the the building burn. Yeah, and also, and maybe that's also good to add. Offensive means you put out a fire, and defensive means you, you don't put water on the fire. Unless. Yeah. 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 Because you are preventing on, the on fire. The, on the building. Yeah, or, yeah. or on the adjacent buildings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're not put adjacent. out the fire, you're just shielding the yeah, yeah. parts <coughs> around. <coughs> and what is the connection with the uh, Cascade uh, 3.0 model and the update of that? Uh, I have to think deeply because because in the update they uh, integrated this these yeah. principles, but okay. of course the cascade model just yeah. says something about fire development. Yeah, yeah. So and where is the intervention moment of the fire surface, and where can, for example, the civilians or the inhabitants yeah. themselves yeah. do something? So it's a really at a good certain question moment, this, because this is actually my point. Oh, okay. <laughs> The basic principles are not only for firefighters, but the basic principles should also be used for fire prevention, because they give you the yeah. the, the things you cannot do, yeah. or maybe they show that what firefighters can do, but with that, you can also see the the kind of the deviations where they can do anything, which means that you should do it in the fire prevention. So fire prevention should also use this as like a benchmark for looking at what should be done in front in the building. And as input of the cascade. Yes, and yeah. then you come in the cascades because yeah. the cascade of the firefighter is really at the end. Yeah. 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 And if you don't want them to, to do it on that cascade, you yeah. have to go. Yeah. Yeah. So this would be the standard? So. And, and, and the, the, the idea of this session, of this breakout session, is that maybe there are buildings where these basic principles as a standard are not enough because you want to do something and we would like to think with you about what can we do in that kind of situations. And the situations that we, at least we already saw, was for example the large buildings. So maybe every day in the Netherlands one of these buildings burns down. And that causes also a lot of smoke. Uh, and that is, of course, not sustain. Oh, that wasn't was the other one. It's sustainable, <laughs> so we don't want the smoke either. So, so the question is, uh, her, her, uh, yeah, you, is you were you were about the, the explosion. Yeah. Eh? Yes, yeah. Uh, so, so maybe we'll come to that the explosion. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so so this is this is one situation. Maybe yeah, there are maybe not many crook. Maybe there is only two, one. Officer and one crew commander now here. Are you a crew commander? Are you from prevention? Prevention? And now I'm a volunteer firefighter. Oh, volunteer firefighter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we we thought it would be nice to think what what can we do in such a situation because uh, very soon you you so you arrive smoke uh, is uh, is coming out of this building. Basic principles: Do I know where the fire is? No. Can I reach it? Mm, well, far away. Uh, do I have enough water? I don't know. So three times no. End of uh, end of exercise. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Louis is always very happy with this because then you can, of course, promote the yeah. uh, totally not yes. combustible installation materials. <laughs> <laughs> Roy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, then of course, that is possible. So, but we would like to find. Uh, maybe ideas because you know if you can expect this to happen in front, in front, in for, uh, yeah. Before uh, so now maybe you can yeah. think with a lot of people yeah. uh, what to do then. Is is this the only option to just let it burn, or can we maybe 
uh, either in prevention or in suppression, find some solutions. And the same goes for, um, for this. Apartment buildings, and this was an apartment, and I think there is also a movie here, yeah? okay, so you can hear, you can see what happens. So this is an example, which also, now, maybe not every day, but once a week we have such a fire, where the smoke spread and the smoke production of a rather small fire is very big, so we have to evacuate all the people, uh, and, uh, and there is a lot of damage from smoke. By the way, this was a... What, we, what you see here was what we nowadays call the transitional attack, water on the fire as soon as possible. If you know where the fire is and you can reach it from outside and you have enough water, you put it out. Yes, yeah, so that works, that works. Uh, and then, of course, the underground parking lots. So that is also a situation uh, like this. Een grote brand in Oosterhout heeft ervoor gezorgd dat de bewoners van een appartementencomplex voor ouderen op straat staan. De brand woedde onder in de parkeergarage van het pand. Daar stond een auto in lichter laaien. Het lijkt erop dat door de brand alle auto's in de garage totaal verkaat yeah. kunnen worden. I don't understand it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is a so this is in de garage. But you de vloer see... van het appartementencomplex heeft ook veel te lijden onder de brand en kraakt volgens ooggetuigen. So this is a situation. Yes, okay, I can click it away <laughs> because now somebody is going to tell about his uh, about his wife. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but this is a situation, you arrive at a fire, there's big smoke coming out of the in entrance of the parking lot, there is a, 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 an apartment building on top of it, you don't know where the fire is, you don't know how much, because she says one car was burning, it turned out to be seven. Seven cars were burning, and uh, it turns out that in our ev evaluation, there was uh, about as much polystyrene in the insulation of the ceiling as there was uh, a heat release rate for the, f for, the f for the cars. So there was really very big uh, heat inside and they put it out. So that is remarkable. <laughs> But uh, that's How not the situation. How did they wait until it went out? Eh? Or did they did really it put it out? Or did they, they put it out or was it, wait, wait it, went it went out by itself? Yeah, it went out by itself. I don't know. <laughs> But Maybe combination. The whole building was full of smoke. Now, high buildings, uh, I deliberately don't say tall buildings or high-rise buildings, but high buildings, which can be uh, from 20 meters, is already maybe a problem. But also, what are we going to do then? Uh, do we know where the fire is? Can we reach it? Do we have enough water? So that is maybe what we wanted to do with you, to think about what can we do. And the idea is that um, one of my predecessors had an idea of that it is a triangle, the, the steering triangle, he called it, and he had a standard, a standard way of acting. And then for predictable situations, you can have a standard deviation. And for not predictable situations, you have the deviation. And his idea was that if you can prepare a standard deviation for your uh, environment, then, then that would be a good idea. So now we have the basic principle, so the standard is set now, and now maybe it is time to think together about what can we do in terms of prevention or suppression uh, in the standard deviation. And we think that these situations might uh, occur uh, very often. So do you feel like uh, talking about that? Or? with enough indicators so you can see when you come down, all right, it's level 12, apartment 3, that I got my, uh, uh, my annotation. So you can, you, so you know where the weather's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, then there you have a check. Then the next point is gonna get on a wall. I think you can arrange that. And then only the distance can be important. So you We found a prevention advisor that can think like like a firefighter, yes. <laughs> really good, huh? Really good, huh? Okay. We That's can that. do this. Yes, <laughs> yes because that, that is maybe something that you can think of. Uh, so, but in fact, actually, we prepared this like, you know, we have sheets and we thought, like, have groups, because in the, fo in the former session there were 25 people, so then you can make groups, but now maybe, I don't know if it is nice to make groups, or do you want to do it plenary, or rather yeah. think about groups, because we have, for every building, we have 
or shall we just yeah, but interact a little? Because I, I we don't we should just do do it interactive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. But but then everybody has to promise to be interactive. Yeah. 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 But, no, but uh, yeah. maybe maybe one thing from his question, which is interesting, is is we talked it in the in the other group as well. Uh, what do we expect from the firefighters? What is the kind of the normatic firefight team expectation? Do we know this? Normal people say they have to put out the fire. Yeah, always. Well, what do you think? Uh, always. Always <laughs> put out the fire. Yeah. yeah. Goes by time. Yeah. At least it's fine. Start <laughs> should be the goal. Ten minutes after. And and this means and this means within the in some time with all the equipment. One hour. All the water. Within about one hour. That's one of the. Uh, I have to think of offensive. Yeah. It's uh, it's within a set time. Yeah. Offensive cannot be done. Okay, so it's not hours. always. Well, now what I mean is you need a kind of a norm. To have a standard, you need a norm. Otherwise, you know, don't know if this is what is expected. So the question, if you should have uh, pinpointed out where the fire is by kind of uh, an installation, or you should have enough water, it, the question is needs to be done. Is that the necessity of the firefighters to do? Is that do they do they need to solve the problem? Do you understand where well, I'm going to? Well, people say yes. I don't know. Because you're, you're, you're made for it. Yeah, but for everything then. <laughs> and, uh, until you're you also, you're from prevention, you're, so there is a... Yeah, but you're from prevention, so there are preventive measures in a building. Yeah. Uh, they well suggest that the fire stays in a kind of a area for some time. True. So on that basis, there's a firefighting standard. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't have need uh, any prevention measures. That's true. Yeah. But so it, it goes wrong with the prevention measures, then you're the next step. Yeah, okay, now we're getting somewhere. So, based on what there is in uh, measures, you have like a coupling with uh, what you can expect from firefighters. But do we know what that is then? And Louis was just saying, and yes, we know. The assumptions of the, the building codes within yeah. 50 minutes after <laughs> the fire occurs, and then 50 minutes after alarm, and then within 60 minutes, the fire has to be... Yeah, and how much, uh, how much engines, uh, water, that's people that's is that then? That's the basis. Yeah, how much that's is that then? That's what we don't care about. It's within 60 minutes. It's yeah. in the building codes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah but, but we the, don't know what it is. Well, you have to prepare yourself to do it. To, to, to do <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that, the, these bad. assumptions are uh, maybe a little bit <laughs> too high. <laughs> no, one of old. the things is uh, it, needs to be, it needs to be a short distance. And one of the, one yeah. of the things we yeah. see is uh, a lot of smoke propagation. Yeah. propagation. Yeah. And uh, once smoke propagation happens and distances become longer, um, the time it takes for us to get to the fire uh, also exponentially grows. Yeah, so within the scheme of Louis, uh, yeah. with That's smoke new. propagation, we are not able to fulfill what this is saying. No. Yeah. Whose problem is it then? A government problem. Once okay. it happens, it's our problem. <laughs> yeah. Once it happens, yes. Yeah, that makes so, so, this is so this is what we mean with standard and deviation. So we have kind of an standards which we really don't know how much material, people or engines it are, but we still think or have something in our mind is one one uh, car with six people maybe that's it but we have situations for example this apartment building where we cannot fulfill what legislation is trying to has have as a as a standard in front then then what we need do we not need to solve it as a firefighters or do we need to solve it in the prevention measures or in both both Fire prevention uh, mm, yeah. thinks that everybody goes out by himself for the yeah. building. So that's all, that would not be a job for the fire service. Yes. Yeah. But it's not a reality. Yeah. Uh, for the strategy, the offensive, offensive, offensive attack, that is the capability for firefighters, the maximum. And that's a fire about 10 megawatts, one ho two hose lines, one or two engines. That's the maximum. When the fire is bigger, the capacity of the fire service is not big enough zeg maar, to uh, go for an off offensive attack, so you have to go defensive. Yeah. And I think that is the line 
when maybe uh, fire prevention should take their measurements to protect that uh, kind of scenarios. But that's not the reality because we have a compartment of 1,000 uh, square feet, uh, meters. Yeah, you know how much. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a fire that could be? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that that's the problem that uh, that's normal people don't know what a firefighter has to do and what they can and what they can. Yeah. And they uh, always say, that your firefighter just put the fire out. Yeah. And so expectations. they don't know if you've got the 10 uh, megawatts and, uh, and two engines. They see, you see a lot of flames and say, yeah, you have to put it out. And then you see you spraying next to the building. They say, yeah, but what are you doing? Yeah. So I think it's also... Uh, Expectations. Expectations from people that what a fire, uh, fighter can and can. Yeah, I think really good one. Uh, so, so, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah you're, you're also uh, stating that you should, your idea is also that you should solve it in fire prevention. But one of the big issues with fire prevention is the human being. Yeah because they mess up the fire prevention yeah. ideas by doing stuff what they shouldn't. It's not always, it cannot always be solved in fire prevention. No, that's true. No, no but yeah. the, we're, we're actually, I want to go with this. We are not that good in uh, telling the uh, society in what we do or can do or can't do. So they, they expect every time fire, firefighters come, they put out the fire. <laughs> no, And because of that, uh, we also really don't know uh, which to expect as a norm. And by that, we cannot state what should be solved in the building or in technical provisions or measures or installations instead of putting it on the, on the end where the firefighters come. So there, there's uh, the dilemma. Yeah, you yeah. And you're quiet for uh, 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Because I'm thinking, you know, in the, in the former class, yes, we also had uh, was 25 people, of course. Our intention is that you look from the side of the suppression. If this ends and you, this is your conclusion, there are certain buildings that we, that we encounter very often. So you can predict that you will have a fire like that uh, one, day, one day in your career. What are you going to do if you are standing there and that is your conclusion based on the standard basic principles? Are there maybe ideas of some kind of standard deviation? What you are going to do? Can you prepare for what you are going to do then? And of course, there is a connection with prevention because you could also always also say, we don't want to be get into that situation. We need to do more prevention. Uh, and, and the difficulty is that if you, uh, if you intend to solve it with suppression, your arguments to solve it in prevention are less hard. You see, so you have to do both. You have to do both. And uh, my, my idea is that, of course, we, we, uh, in this discussion, uh, it would be better to solve it on the prevention side, and we need to do that. But in the meanwhile, of course, a lot of buildings are still like this. So in the meanwhile, it does not discharge the fire service to think, what are we going to do if this is our conclusion? Is there absolutely nothing we can do? Or is our conclusion we do nothing? So that is, uh, for example, now, uh, in these uh, large buildings, is there something we can think of and prepare and train? What are we going to do when we have to deviate from these basic principles? Or maybe it is not possible. Maybe we, our conclusion is now. There is no possibility. We need to have more prevention, for example. But, uh, so I look through the... Yes, it's a di it's a di yeah, because you are now all looking like, okay, so now I think yeah. that maybe I'm making it want? more difficult. Yeah. 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 What does he want? No. So, so let's, we, we try no, to do okay. a, a, a case. Maybe we should, yeah, yeah. Take, a case. take a case. Make it, make it a little bit more... Uh, uh, make a yeah. case. Yeah, take, take, take the large building. Yeah, yeah do you find what, that? Okay. What's large? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't want a large building. Okay, <laughs> what do you want? Take high buildings. Yeah, high buildings. Okay. So we say in the basic principles, take some time, and then we say do a reconnaissance. Do, do a 360, yeah? yeah. Are we going to do a 360 at this kind of building? Maybe you can On answer. the way to the incident. <laughs> but the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the preventive right, right. measurement, the measurements can help us. Driving around. 
get an answer to the three uh, questions. Yeah. So what you said about the um, installation, the installation where you see it, yeah. Uh, what smoke detector uh, got on first? Yeah. Instead of all ten due to smoke propagation. Yeah. So I have a, a somewhat of an indication of where the fire is. Yeah, so but well, nowadays yeah. there's not such an installation this kind of building when it's a residential building. Take the case from this morning where they thought the fire was in a yeah. room but it was on the hallway. If they yeah. knew that from the beginning they could push through that hallway instead of checking every room and yeah, so this is some a, time. This is kind of example would could what could help but yeah. But again, a three hundred sixty, if you think that the three hundred sixty is really important, but what can you do then here? What kind of in a phase Yes. <laughs> drone. And, and I don't mean that you should have all drones now, but if you think a 360 here in this kind of thing is really important, because then you can see where the fire is, you know how, uh, where you should go, then you should look for this kind of uh, innovation. Um, uh, and other aspect here is, okay, so we have drone, we have this installation, which maybe also give us an indication of where the fire is. Uh, can we reach the fire? Is this a problem in this kind of a building? Mm -hmm. Yes, no, yes. Are. From outside, this is not possible. It depends. Yeah. Drone with a hose. Drone with a hose <laughs> could be in a, yeah, could be an innovative solution, but it's difficult from outside. Let's say this. Yeah. So actually, in this kind of buildings, we need to go inside always. So the outside quadrants are. Brilliant. Yeah. Actually, the only the, the only things here to do is to go inside. So outside can be necessary defensive yeah. because uh, if there's a building nearby, yeah, yeah, yeah. some things fall off the building. Yeah, also no. a problem. Okay. Yeah. So if you do the, the, the two things, I don't know if you have, if you have two teams do an offensive team and a defensive team. No, no, it's not football. <laughs> 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 So, the but what what is the from Sid that he thinks about American football? Yeah, so the line of <laughs> oh yeah, so that's a good one. Yeah, that no, the line. No you can have a quarterback outside, and the rest can go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, well, one of the things maybe because you know I read a report about Grenfell and the Kent Fire Service now has a procedure wherein they say the most important thing here is to uh, protect the stairway. Of course, we recognize something that Michael Reich also always says. The stairway, the escape route, is the most important thing that the fire service should do first. In a high that building. is a principle that is not in the basic principles. That is not a part of the basic principles, because in normal situations you probably don't do this. But if you are not going to reach the fire as soon as possible in the shortest way with enough water because you don't know where it exactly where it is and you don't know how to and you have a long time to reach it maybe that is the first thing you would do so instead of extinguishing the fire maybe you should maybe maybe one team should check all the doors to the stairways and uh, and lock them or so, <laughs> something I don't know or, or put the uh, smoke stoppers in all the uh, that kind of things so that so that's what I'm thinking of of course uh, we need also we need innovations but honestly the question is quite a good one yeah because what happened in Grenfell is exactly what he sa suggests they went inside they fought the fire on the inside didn't watch the outside and the flame were on the outside but they yeah. fought in other places yeah. yeah in yeah. other places yeah and then it went up by an yeah. ECM in, in, a, in a very, very, very rapid. Yeah, but you, it also in Grenfell, you wouldn't have put out the fire from outside. There wasn't I disagree. Water. Yeah, I maybe disagree. now if with the. No, no, no. In, in, in hindsight, if you yeah, would have okay. had a team on the outside, on the right moment. Yeah, yeah. If I agree okay. with you, if it would have been on the 20th floor, wouldn't have, wouldn't no chance. But well, because it was on the fourth floor, if they would have had a team yeah, outside, that could be. they probably could have had a chance yeah. to keep it under control. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay. The fire the reaching on that helped also. The fire, the fire at that location was reachable. The rest of the tower wasn't reachable. But the, yeah. the fire spread from uh, the paneling, it was reachable. At the moment, at the moment yeah. it went outside, it was on the fourth yeah. floor, so that's yeah. 16, it was 20 meters up. I, I didn't it know that either. Yeah. 
Maar ook de René, uh, René already but did a good comment. Of course, you would also say, yeah, uh, the fire shouldn't have spread around the oh. facade this. Uh, of course. Yeah. So you could, also, you could also say this kind of high-rise builders, it's really important that the fire stays in the compartment. Yeah. So the reliability of the fire to stay in the compartment is actually necessary for a good firefighting technique. You could also make this combination. And then you can do it from the inside. And then you should look, okay, so how reliable should the, should the preventive measures be? So that we, if, the, if we, uh, this is for example 15 meters, if we go through to 300 meters, we have higher, we need higher reliability that the fire stays in that compartment because it takes more time for us to act. Okay, then, yeah. You know, yeah. but this, of course, this is the this is the uh, this is <coughs> the discussion that you're having, and then it comes back on what do we expect that the firefighters can do? Yes, and for exa another example is, uh, for it's example, <coughs> I, I know from Grenfell that they now they proved that the the monitors from outside did work, but they weren't enough because uh, they couldn't reach the whole. Uh, and via surrounding of the of the tower. So maybe one of the uh, basic principles in the deviation uh, would be like until that level, yeah. we need enough external uh, streams to uh, to hold the fire from outside. But above that, we are not yeah. able to. And but I don't think that any fire service would now propagate uh, propagate that we we need higher. Uh, truck letters, for example. We, are, we have what we have. <laughs> the UK but they have. So, but <laughs> that doesn't mean that if the fire is on the first floor, you don't do anything, no. I think. So it's not always. But above a certain level, above maybe but the fourth the floor. The problem of flames is that they are constantly seeking for energy. Yeah. And oxygen. And oxygen. And oxygen. So. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, but you see now the, 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 the nowadays rules that the, 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 the NEN 6068 also says if you are above 20 meters, your facade has to be 60 minutes uh, fire resistant. So yeah, they yeah, yeah, already yeah. Uh, take measurement of that. Yeah, but in this case, the building is surrounded by water on three sides. Yes. Yeah. So, so can the building be fire yeah, resistant on three yeah. sides? Yeah. The norm reachable. Enough water, but not on the right or point. Not on the water, about 20 minutes, not reachable, then it has to be 60 minutes. So that I think it's, it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So and another one is, for example, another one is, for example, where do you start? Yeah. For example, if you are going to evacuate, where do you start? For example, the Rotterdam Fire Service, they have some kind of order. So they, I think they start on the uh, level uh, on the level fire where floor. the fire is and then the level above and the level the, uh, underneath Beneath. and the, the, that's how it, I don't know exactly, but there is a, so, 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 so if you, so the, the, um, if you know yeah. where to start, then at least you have a first order, yes? So at least you can have thought in advance, where, where, what do I do when I encounter this? So it is above the fourth floor, so we cannot do anything from outside, we have to go inside and we start at this level. So Something actually, like actually we, we have still, still have this discussion eh? and we already said we don't have all the answers, but we try to find it in, in a way of a standard deviation on top of the, yeah, on top of the basic, the basic principles. principles. And where it comes really a deviation, so not a standard deviation, but a deviation. We shouldn't try to solve it as a fire in the fire of, uh, fighting. We should solve it in prevention. And then well, maybe it's b good to do to this one ground. because we have the scheme. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. had that scheme. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. going back to parking, uh, parking f uh, f uh, fires, parking lots. So if you try to put the basic principles on it, what what comes out of it then? Depends. Yeah, on on protect the neighbors. That's the only thing you can do. So, it, yeah. So you, uh, Roy, you're actually saying in a lot of times uh, when you go to a parking garage, there is a fire. You don't know where the fire is, or you don't know how to reach it, and maybe even you don't have enough water. So that means, on first, in first hand, you say, okay, just we cannot do anything. Just try to shield the environment. And you yeah, make it your is, it is parking cars. Yeah. Uh, yesterday to, uh, Wojciech. to Wojciech. Yeah. And they 
and then they have those jet flows, then you're smoke free. And then, in theory, we have those <laughs> in the Netherlands as well. Yeah, but I don't think they get very useful, I think. I'm not sure about that, but I, I, I don't hear a lot of. No, you well, have. We've got a nice okay, a really, a, a really short history. You have a lot of different. Uh, parking lots with a lot of different yeah. preventive measures. There are uh, really good uh, parking garages beneath the ground with good ventilation systems which have kind of a tunnel ventilation, which means <coughs> if you have a, a good speed over the, the, the whole garage, it's like you have a really nice uh, area where it's clean and you have a bad contaminated area. Those are there in the Netherlands. They're not a lot, but they are. You also have a lot of uh, ventilation systems which are not based on like building a speed over the parking lot, but just trying to uh, circulate. And then by circulating, they suspect the fire goes out. And if you circulate it enough, it will eventually uh, go clean. But there's a really important thing about this. They expect the fire to go out. So in parking lots, actually, uh, in normal buildings, the building regulation suggests that the fire stays in the compartment. But in parking lots is one of the examples where we say, hey, the firefighters go inside and make out the fire. Why? Roy just told you, this is not what you should expect. But still, we do this in a lot of uh, preventive scenarios. Yeah, there in, it, there it gets deviated from each other. Yeah, but in, in this kind of situation, you are without a chance of finding the fire if you've got this amount of smoke and it's filled to the floor. You can also use your heat camera, nice. One, one nice equal color, yeah. but it doesn't show you where the fire is. Yes, so, okay, let's take that as, as, a, as a starting point. But normally they have also the smoke detectors. Yeah. On the display when you arrive as a fire service, they have a... Yeah, but they mostly have areas. And that's, that's board with... Yeah, but not just pinpointed on the real. Position, they have areas, yeah. so okay, then you know, yeah, then it depends how big this area is. <laughs> yeah, and, and in some cases, you have uh, you have indicators for the smoke detectors where they are, but uh, if the if the if the first one goes off and then the second one, the first one stays on. So, if you come as a firefighter, there are 10 signals. There's someone in the building who's no. going outside who tells you. Yeah, but yeah. it's really well, difficult it's to find. But, but you can you can try to do this, but then yeah. still, then you have to go to the smoke. The question is, can you reach the fire? The second one is, do you need do you have enough water? If there's more than two or three cars it, for the first engine, you don't have enough water. So the the I, I go with the Roy says. You come at starting point on the scene. And then you, you cannot go inside. What should what should be things which could help be helpful here? So what could be the deviation from the basic principles? What, what do, do you, you need, do, Rene? What do you, do, what do you need in this kind of situation? Uh, did you did you ever had such? Because yeah. in in Twente they always uh, extinguish these fires. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so so I, they I don't. Do. They, they <laughs> they A few years ago, I was. On the attack team on a, a garage fire, and we can, uh, we could locate the, the, the car fire. And only one car, free, no cars yeah. around. The so field. basic principles. A lot of smoke. The heat was uh, not uh, not high, so we can make a advance yeah. tour to the car with a high pressure hose reel. <laughs> yes, go. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that was a lucky one. Um, we yeah. have also cases where uh, it's not possible to locate the fire. Also in Twente, and too much the smoke up. Uh, to the upper uh, layers, to the apartments was a big problem. Yeah. So uh, at the end, they could could find the, the car, cars. Uh, I mean, three cars on three fire. Three cars on fire, but but the smoke you have to eva evacuate uh, the whole building. That was a big problem. And yeah. were the cars already? And I think that it's. I, well, I think so, but what I miss in the, the basic principle is smoke. Yeah. Smoke is a big we problem. We heard that so earlier. On <laughs> our, um, yeah. I can yeah. imagine the the, the spot we saw yesterday. Yeah. We sent that one in for reckon, uh, reckon, uh, reckon, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can see where the fire is. You can see the uh, amount of fire, and then you can decide. You can go offensive or yeah. to stay defensive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> 
so everybody should have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is is a robot something? As yeah. a deviation from the standard? The robot needs Maybe. to be protected too. Yeah. Can it stand a high heat in a parking garage? Yeah, so it, it's not just a robot, it has to uh, fulfill some requirements, yeah? yeah. With, a, with a nozzle and a hose? Oh yeah, it becomes yeah. Uh, complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Sprinkler. Send them in. Yeah. yeah so Bigger parking spaces to make sure that we can open the doors again without damaging them and preventing cars from spreading from one fire to the other. <laughs> Well, it's yeah, really big so, uh, so uh, an own, uh, own place. As a matter of fact, no place, it is yeah. <laughs> that these parking lots are really irritating because, you know, from theory and from basic principles, you would say we can do nothing. We should, what, what you say, we have to get out all the people upstairs, you know, if there is a building on top of it. Uh, but the fact is that the latest uh, parking lot garage of a uh, parking garage is fires. Most of the time, firefighters extinguished it. And that is because most of the time we are lucky that there is only one car, car burning. For example, in Alkmaar, we investigated that fire. There were two cars that were very far apart, and there was nothing parked next to it. And even one open space next to it is enough to not let the fire spread to the next car. But if the parking lot is full of cars, then, of course, you have a, a bad situation. And uh, somehow, of, uh, we are all the, all the time lucky, but we do not have enough case studies to, uh, to underbuild what we think that would happen. So, uh, but in principle, yeah, so, so in this situation, uh, one of our colleagues was thinking also, and that is maybe why we were inspired to do this, to, to, to see maybe maybe there is more buildings where you can say this, because he says, okay, so we have the basic principles. If I apply them to a parking garage, underground parking garage, we have a problem. Uh, shall show, I do show, it? Show, yeah, show. shall I do it? Maybe for, the, for inspiration. Eh? Well, maybe and that's why we, so this is what we wanted to do, <laughs> but what, what we didn't do. <laughs> 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 but uh, and this is such an example. So one of our colleagues said, okay, so if I, if I apply the basic principles as a standard, then this is what we can do, you know, maximum. And he, we had a discussion about how many vehicles it could be, but we say one, one, but he said yes, but sometimes one is burning a little bit and the next is also burning a little bit. So together maybe three and a half, three half cars is almost one car. So about this, about this is what you can do is 10 megawatts is one, Low pressure hose line. No, yes. hy no hydrogen. Oh, sorry, uh, low pressure. <laughs> yeah. No hydrogen. Yes, because we didn't take that into account yet. So that is a new problem. Maybe an extra, an extra argument not to go inside just if you don't know what is happening. So, but he says, okay, so, so if we can locate the fire and, and we know that we have enough, enough uh, cooling capacity and, um, and we can reach it. Then, then we can apply basic principles. That is our standard. So if these conditions are there, then we can do it. Otherwise, you know, when it is bigger, then we have, let's say, a transition phase, which we call the standard deviation. But we are not going to solve that standard deviation with more of the same. So we need to innovate and we need to uh, use other means to do that. The standard deviation is complicated and we need specialists. Specialist material, specialist maybe special people, we need to take into account traveling fires, etc. So, and then uh, he said, okay, but we are going to do this with cobra cutters, with uh, special equipment, with robots. And his fire service has a few of them. So they, they have the option to do that. Of course, prevention should prevent that we have to do this, but if it is necessary, then we have at least thought about that more of the same will not solve this problem. Yes? And that is a way of thinking that I thought was very interesting because, so if you don't have this of, or, or you cannot do this, then you always go to the, to the deviation, which means that you can do nothing and that you will, hopefully you are lucky and that the fuel will get burned. 
Yeah. So yes, so and that is sometimes is that the situation in Alkmaar, for example. It took them so long before they found the fire and they could extinguish it that there was no fire anymore when they reached it. <laughs> so if you if you if you wait an hour and there's only two cars far apart burn, burning, in an hour the car is gone. So this is a serious option in a parking lot garage just to wait until it goes out by itself. Serious option. If there is not too many cars, you can do that. Why not? And, and those two are also, but that is also uh, a key for having the conversation about prevention. Yes. So you can use this as, a, for example, with a building owner, or just do you know what we're doing when there is a fire? If it falls in those two things, we can do something. If it goes to this one, we cannot. Yeah. And then you have the, the discussion about, do, you, do we accept that? And if you don't accept that, then you have to do something about it, but not within the firefighting. Sometimes and you already know this, of yeah. course, because... Sometimes but you it, just yeah. uh, make it uh, let it burn, yeah. but then uh, upgrade your construction so that your building will collapse. Yeah. Yeah. For and so for yeah. you, this would be very interesting to know this, you know? So, and if the fire service wants to invest in this, then it is, of course, uh, uh, Okay, maybe a discussion, maybe the parking lot should pay. If you want to save your building, then maybe you should give us that material, that kind of things. But that is not what we are here for. Is that, is that the you reason know? why in Amsterdam you pay 21 euros per hour to park your car in a parking garage? Yes. <laughs> yes. No, so it can no, burn. You yes. have to pay 21, 21 no, euros. Only that car. <laughs> yeah, but, only that car, yeah. But, but, but this is, I, I thought this was interesting. So maybe that kind of... And of course, this only works now if you have that alternative. But there was uh, recently there was a very big fire in somewhere in in, the, in Utrecht, and um, they uh, they decided also. So, so we are gon not going to save these buildings. But there was somewhere there was a fire resistant wall, and the, the 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 matter was can we can we maybe stop the fire at the fire resistant wall? And it would have been possible, but not with more of the same, because you couldn't go in uh, anymore. So, but they s so normally the fire service, and we would, we are all educated to do that. We would say, grote brand, zeer grote brand, compagnie, weet ik wat. So, and, but in this situation, and also in that situation, if you want a defensive, defensive approach inside the building, so you want to keep the, the fire resistant wall intact, you don't need more engines. But you, de you need other equipment, and that would be maybe the standard, standard deviation. And that is m maybe another way of thinking, because the officers in charge at that fire, they were in the film like, okay, everything, more. we cannot more. save this, we yeah. more of the same, yeah. So what do you think of this idea? Can we apply this for other buildings, that maybe for large buildings, for high rises, for apartment buildings? They're still uh, processing. A strong yeah, yeah, point yeah. of this document was he made a connection between prevention and suppression yeah. and uh, the possible tactics for uh, firefighters. Yeah, because uh, uh, firewalls, ventilation systems, sprinkler systems, and that was a good point of this uh, document because what are the goals of the, the fire service at, uh, at the incident? So it helps firefighters to uh, look at other options and the last side can help uh, fire prevention to think about hey, what are the possibilities they yeah, have. Yeah. Because the most simple thing, of course, is that what you said in the beginning, like if we, n if, if, so if you can achieve with prevention measures that we always know where the fire is and that we can reach it in a safe way. Uh, for example, the parking lot underneath the museum plan near the, near the Rijksmuseum has a fire resistant wall, uh, hallway. So you have the parking lot, and there is a hallway with uh, fire-resistant glass, and you can walk there. Yeah, so you can reach the fire without... You would say you will walk there when there's a fire. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I would, I would not... <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's, a, it's an escape route and also an attack huh? route. I don't know if it works in practice, but it, it was designed... <laughs> No, they it was because the work. fire service said, okay, if you want to extinguish the fire, then we have to reach it. So yeah. they made a special hallway for the fire service to, to enter the building uh, and, and reach the fire. It's, um, yeah. 
is that yeah so that that so but you can think about it as a pref you are very good at that you know you guys prevention guys you can maybe find solutions <laughs> I, so I, these, I these are the requirements we are trying <laughs> to do something together and now he's saying the prevention guys <laughs> <laughs> no of course, not, of course not. but that at is at least we have terms and definitions yeah yes and at least we have them yeah so and for 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 what la for for example, large buildings, you know, you could say like, okay, if, 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 if we have a, uh, an exit door or an entrance door every 25 meters, then, you know, we can always open the door, well, see if, it, is the, if the fire here, you know, that, they are not going to do it because it is too expensive, but that would be an option, probably. Or oh, maybe, now, now he's laughing, yeah? <laughs> so, um, but, so this, this could be, Yeah. 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 So, but then the question is, do we know what we accept? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Can we predict it? Yeah. Yeah. Can we predict it? Yeah. <coughs> so, would this be this idea be applicable, for example, for a large building? This <coughs> one. Yeah. So, so we what have would that be the standard then. Yes, as a standard deviation. So, what do we need? What would be the standard deviation for for a large building? We're asking a lot from them, man. Yeah. Yeah. On the yeah. second day, <laughs> about <laughs> half past. About four. roof fires on large buildings. What's roof fires. Roof yeah. fires. Yeah. yeah. In uh, combination with, uh, for example, PV panels or, or such as. Mm, nice. Yeah. yeah. Are they? Do we know where the fire is? Yeah, on the roof, Mike. So yeah. We think. Yes, it's there. there. Can we reach yeah. it? No, no, no it's, it's upstairs. Can we reach it? Probably yeah. not. Is there water yet? Hopefully raining. not. <laughs> is there water? No. <laughs> no. So no. raining. Just yeah. raining. Okay, and then. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then we're, then we're there, and then. So I think in, in uh, at the moment these kind of fires are the deviation. And what we see now is five fire service will do that stinking best. So, uh, to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, best. yeah if, if, if they will do their best. <laughs> Spelling. I don't know. Best. This is maybe not English, but yeah, okay. So, they will do their best to uh, to extinguish if they have enough trucks available to do that or whatever. But reach it. and most of the time they they succeed. Yes, uh, and sometimes they don't succeed. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that that will be a problem in the future, more and more a problem in the future. The, the roofs with the yeah. solar panels on top. Yeah. Yeah. And then all the fire servicemen, they are watching with their hands on the, on the back. It's the, the picture you, you showed. Yes. Some months ago, or some years yes. ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we are lucky that uh, that uh, some fire services still have the 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 standard norms for uh, yeah, what is it, uh, fire fire trucks before the law, because in the law there is no standard, there is now no norm for fire trucks. So we could get rid of all the fire trucks. You can what? You can get rid of all the fire trucks. Oh yeah. Yes. And uh, because they are not in the law, and a lot of fire officers think that if it is not in the law, you don't need to have it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's, that's true. Yeah. The building code doesn't say that you need to do something. You don't no, but this is not so the building code. This is the, no, the right. this uh, is the fire sa this is the thing. fire safety yeah. act. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there is only a, yeah, there well is well. only a norm for the first engine. Yeah, that's true. The and, uh, and so the first engine has to be there in uh, 15 minutes. Or 8 or 5. Well, yeah, sometimes, sometimes, minutes, sometimes uh, 8, minutes, 10, 15 minutes, 15 minutes 18, maximum 18 minutes, but there is no standard. It doesn't say what kind of vehicle. 
Small. So you're going on bike, uh, coming here with the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or how many people, or what kind but, of equipment, but, uh, or... So most of the fire services are not that stupid that they did it, but of course they are discussing now how long should it take before the truck ladder is there, because there is no no. Yeah. This is what I meant So maybe it can come after 30 minutes. This is what I meant with so what can will we come expect. Back. So what's, yeah. what can we expect from when we say firefighters go to a fire? What can we expect? Is this in uh, people, materials, uh, vehicles? Uh, tactics, uh, outcome, no, and this is not, everybody has an idea about it, everybody thinks that there is, there is some norm, yeah. but that's, it's never, it's not on paper, it's not, you it know, is it's just, your job in the next coming years. <laughs> yes, 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 that's why we have a, such yeah. a fresh, well, young, there is a, there <laughs> new, but there is something else, because in, in the UK they have this, they have this, I think, or not, what? they have this norm in the UK. They have norms for everything in the yeah. UK. Uh, they have so many that they even don't know. That after the Grenfell, there, there, uh, oh, they say, so they important. say, uh, after Grenfell, they say, hey, you didn't fulfill on mm -hmm. the what, yeah. what uh, yeah. So yeah. there's also the backside of it because there is nothing. There's also uh, you cannot say and to anybody, hey, you should have done you this. Yeah. So yeah. And as a society, we don't want to pay uh, twenty thousand uh, or eighty thousand yes. volunteers and. and yeah, but so still, yeah, but still, I believe that that as fire. don't do anything. No, so still, I believe as firefighters, you, you should tell people what to expect, and then yeah. maybe Manage not all, maybe that's not directly the norm now, but you should tell what yeah. to expect, and what you can or cannot do. Otherwise, you can never have a discussion about what should be done in the yeah. regulation. A nice article for. Uh, Yes, so, so I'm happy that you are here. Maybe you can take it uh, with you in your in your PhD study. Yeah. <laughs> what is uh, so? But uh, I think that the energy is a little bit gone. Yes, am I correct or not? What is it? Energy is gone. Eh? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that maybe We're maybe maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe so it's, it's gone out. Yeah. So Please shut off the camera. <laughs> yeah, what, any questions? Or any remarks or any, any other subjects that you want to discuss with us? Because yeah. you never see Get us together because a <laughs> leader is always too busy. So. <laughs> uh, is, is, is the idea that the fire brigade is going to tell people what to expect if they don't take the measures they could have taken? Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure about that, Before but the uh, at the moment there is uh, the, the fire service doctrine. It's now almost. Uh, Agreed on by the by the board of uh, fire chiefs, and there it says what are what is the basic principles for firefighting, and one of the principal t principles is that in certain circumstances, especially in these complex buildings, fire service cannot be expected to give a certain result, but we will do our best. Mm -hmm. Something is in there, uh, but also that the fire service wants to invest in awareness. So also the fire prevention part is very important for, for that and also creating awareness and also uh, creating awareness about your own responsibility in fire, fire safety as a, as a society but also as a civilian, as a, uh, somebody who lives in our country has all, always their own responsibility. So that's what the fire service thinks and what they say in their doctrine now. Yeah, but that, that, there was nothing like that earlier, yeah? So, so, so in fact, what, uh, what, what uh, Louis, what you said, is yeah. it, is some, it is written somewhere, I think yeah. in the building code, but these are assumptions. So they say, our building regulations are based on these assumptions. Let's say that the fire service is there within 15 minutes after the fire is discovered. Let's say that the fire service helps people escape until 30 minutes after, after the fire ignited, yes, and within 60 minutes the fire service has the fire under control, but they did not define what is on under control. <coughs> so it can be under control if it cannot spread any further than where the fire service stops it, and that is always possible within an hour, I think. Uh, Exits could be the, just on the, but, but on these, the facility. And that is, that is where, where the 30, 60 minutes of fire assistance walls, etc., uh, are only originating from. But there is another act, and that says, like, and that is also, I think, the building act, where it says that our assumptions are that there is two uh, 
uh, main objective of the fire prevention measures. That is firstly, the neighbor shouldn't yeah? So you know, of course. Yeah. Uh, and the yeah. second one is that everybody has to be. Yeah. So, so in within 30 minutes, uh, everybody has to be out of the building. And uh, with between 15 and 30 minutes, the fire service helps people to get yeah. out. That's so an after, after but applying that's all the rules, yeah. what can we then expect from the firefighters to fulfill those goals? This, we don't know. Yeah, and, and what maybe, is necessary then? Maybe there is no discrepancy between the basic principles and this. I don't know. Well, again, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But now, of course, it's interesting to see. Okay, if, this, if these are the basic yeah. principles, what what does it mean in, in in relationship to the to the to what is in the building code? I don't know. And to, to be more on your question, I think they should. But then uh, you could do all all kinds of different levels. So you you could talk to mun municipalities about. Uh, just asking them, do you know what we are going to do when, uh, vo for example, there's a fire in a big industrial building? Do you know what we're going to do? Just ask them, and then they would say, yeah, you, you come and put out the fire. And then you ask them, oh, do, do you know uh, how fast uh, and with how many we are there? Yeah. And they say, yeah, yeah, you come as fast as possible. No, we are there somewhere within 10 to 20, 30 minutes after the fire ignites. So what do we expect the fire is then? Yeah, um, I don't know. No, then you say, well, fire could be, maybe not the whole building is on fire, but it's kind of big. We come with one engine, we cannot, we cannot extinguish the fire. We can call and bring more uh, vehicles and people, but bef when they are there, the fire has grown bigger. So actually, from the moment on, the fire is spreading and it's quite big, we are on the defensive strategy, which means we're not going to put out the fire. We only look at adjacent buildings. And then he has, okay, so what does that mean? That means that we have a large fire over a long period of time with smoke in the environment. And then he says, oh, there's a highway nearby. What does that mean for the highway? Could be closed. If the smoke is going that direction, it could be closed. And you're not going to put out fire. No, we can't put out a fire. Yeah, but it's the discussion it's the just uh, simple explaining yeah. what you can or cannot do. They use the, uh, the R A M the ram from yes. uh, VNOV. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then you have a discussion, and, and then you have a, a societal discussion if, if this is acceptable and uh, for economic reasons could be acceptable. But then you know what's going to happen. You know what you get. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, if, if, if you just look at the parking yeah. garage, yeah. fairly yeah. simple, uh, you nowadays have these nice red and green lights all over the parking garage. You can see exactly yeah. there is a spot left. Yeah. When you get there, there's somebody else slipping in, but <laughs> you can see it. Yeah. Uh, why not make them a little bit more different that they can also say, this one burned the first time. Yeah. Cool. So that somebody yes. in the front of the garage yes. can tell you, hey, that's where the fire started. Yeah. 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 That, I don't that think that's massively more expensive than already no. having the lights telling you, hey, the parking garage is full, you cannot park here anymore. Yeah. You can use the same light. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're, I, uh, they're out when they get to the fire. <laughs> you need just other way of thinking about yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised because apparently there is enough money to make all these lights, which is luxurious, I think. Or well, you could also make small uh, heat detectors to find the fire or maybe even to detect sensors. Uh, an electric vehicle which is heating up. Uh, something like that, yeah? so that kind of measures they are not taken, but there is money to make luxurious lights where you can see where it's an open parking lot. Uh, that's yeah, but but that's okay. Yeah. okay, yeah. I think we're, uh, we're done or not. <laughs> yeah. Are you done? I'm done. <coughs> okay, well. Um, okay, so thanks, thanks everybody. <laughs> Thank you, and. Uh, uh, was, was it a nice yeah. act? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, we stop talking English now. Yeah. I, 
Dat we hadden eigenlijk jullie in Nederland waren wel getuigen getuige van een bijzondere. Ja. Ja. Jullie, waren, jullie waren wel getuigen van een bijzondere situatie. Want je ziet nu, ons, nu je kunnen ziet we ons weer. nooit ja. samen. Hè? Want hij heeft de tijd. Ja. 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 Ja.